Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for holding the hearing and the witnesses for being here and their input on these important issues. I want to bring up the issue of uh, solar electronic propulsion demonstration with you, Ms. Robinson, if you could. Um, the NASA Reauthorization Act calls for a balance between human spaceflight using and building upon existing capabilities and then investing in new capabilities. And one such technology is solar electronic propulsion. So what is the current status of the research on that? And how much is NASA budgeting for that demonstration in the, um, you know, the next five-year time window, 11 to 15? Right. Well, I'll have to get back to you on the specifics of how much we're spending now um, and uh, how much uh, we've carved out um, in the future lines. Um, again, given the uncertainty that we have, some of the, the lines that would support solar electric propulsion are the ones that are most in question. But NASA is very excited about that technology and is pursuing it in a number of um, laboratories and, and certainly in a, um, in a concerted research effort. And so we, um, uh, that w was one of the technologies that uh, we want to bring forward and, and um, bring, her to, bring to a higher technology readiness level and so that we can start demonstrating its effects. Well, it obviously factors into the human exploration framework team mm -hmm. for space missions. So mm -hmm. um, right. I'll look for, I guess, I, I guess, you know, a budget number is what we're really after for okay. FY11 to FY15. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll, we'll do that, that for the record, yeah. Okay, great. Another thing that is of lots of interest, I think, across the country is this site selection process for the retired shuttles. Mm -hmm. And obviously the NASA Authorization Act of 2010 stated that these space orbiters shall be available and located for display and maintenance through a competitive process. And could you describe for the committee what that competitive procedure process is and what's being undertaken? Right. Well, the process that we have at NASA, um, and it's, it'll be the administrator's decision uh, where the orbiters go. Uh, we have put out uh, several requests for information. We've um, uh, been contacted, it's been wonderful, we've been contacted by hundreds of <laughs> potential applicants. And we've been looking, um, the team, uh, which I'm not on, but the team has been looking through uh, and evaluating those um, uh, uh, proposals from the from uh, potential museums and sites as to um, some of the key factors that the authorization bill and, and other places um, have stressed for us in terms of how many students can see it, um, uh, is there, is, do people around the country have access to them? And so um, that evaluation say, is ongoing. When you say a team, is that a site selection committee? No, it's just, a, it's just a team that's looking at the information and advising the administrator. And so what, what will the administrator make his decision on? Um, he'll make his decision based on um, several criteria that have been set forth um, and talked about in the request for information. Um, and I'll have to get those for you for the record. I can't um, uh, list them all. And is there going to be geographic diversity as part of the consideration? That's part of the consideration, yes. Okay. Will the White House be involved? Um, we'll have to get back to you for the record. I'm not involved in the process. I don't believe they are. It's the, it's the administrator's decision. Well, I, I, think, I think there's a lot of different people who are very interested in this, and um, I think the RFI was stipulated that 28 million was required to be interested, and anyway, I think there's lots of different changing things here, and I think what people are looking for is a process that people really understand, that it's transparent. Mm -hmm. that people know what the requirements are and if the administrator is going to make the decision based on what is the administrator going to make the decision. Mm -hmm. So if it's not an official RFP with a site selection process and it's just advice, you know, a little more framework, um, obviously communities like ours have already built an entire infrastructure around the public access mm -hmm. to our space and flying history and obviously would like to build on that further. But 
certainly want to understand that the western part of the United States is not going to be overlooked in the assets that it's brought as part of this history. And so anyway, we just um, I mean, is NASA considering the Smithsonian for one of these sites? Um, regard, as regards the Smithsonian, the Smithsonian has the right of first refusal. Um, and uh, why do they have a, the, the why? Because yeah. they're the um, I don't actually know the term of art, but they're the nation's what? It's an MOU. <laughs> it's a, a memorandum of understanding with them. And we have, uh, the, the orbiters are, are one class of uh, NASA artifacts that, um, that we've interacted with the Smithsonian. I think it, um, if you go to the Air and Space Museum, you see lots of NASA hardware. And so we have an ongoing MOU with them. Is, are they required to pay the $28 million? Um, Yes. At this point, yes. OK. NASA doesn't have the funds to cover those um, transportation and uh, um, making the orbiters ready for museum and public uh, exposure. Okay, well I will look forward to more specifics about how the administrator is going to make the decision. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.